you came unto the land where thou sittest, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. Nevertheless, the people who dwell in the land are strong. The cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. Would you lift your voice one more time? Lord, we love you today and we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your spirit that is moving freely in the house. Thank you, Lord, for what I believe has been released from our spirits today. And I thank you, Lord, for inhabiting the praises of your people. Lord, I thank you. Lord, we're worshiping you in spirit. And now we're about to worship in word, in truth. I pray that your word would come alive in our heart. That you would help us today. That your will would be done. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. You can be seated. They said the people are strong that dwell in the land. The cities are walled and very great. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south. The Hittites, the Jebusites, the Amorites dwell in the mountains. And the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. Verse 30, and Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession. For we are well able to overcome it. He said, let's go right now. And let's go because we are able to possess what God has promised. We are able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, we be not able to go against the people. For they are stronger than we. They brought up an evil report. Notice it was an evil report of the land which they had searched under the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. They went and they looked. And they looked and they saw the walls. They saw walled cities. <laughs> and they saw the beady eyes of giants. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> See the beady eyes of giants? They said, there we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we're in our own sight as grasshoppers. So were we in their sight. Israel, Israel said, we went and we looked. And when we got there, the walls were huge. And there were these huge giants in the land. And we realized at once that in their sight, we were like grasshoppers. We were like bugs. <laughs> We were like a little toy. We were small. We were insignificant. They were massive, huge, <coughs> towering giants. That's how the enemy wants us to see him tonight. That's how he wants us to see him. Israel saw themselves as bugs. They saw in the face of giants. Peter said that our adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Somebody roar like a lion for me. Ha, ha, ha. 
we hear the roar, we perceive or understand that a lion is close by. When we hear the roar of the enemy, we understand the enemy is close by. When Israel saw the giants, they looked and they perceived that they were stronger than themselves. When they looked at the giants towering above them, they perceived, they thought or understood in their heart that they, the enemy, is stronger than we. I want to preach tonight about the deception of perception. The deception of perception. Because what we perceive is not always true. The things we perceive sometimes deceive. I mentioned this morning that one of the tactics of the devil that he uses against us was grudges that we hold against or some unforgiveness. I mentioned that unforgiveness gives Satan an advantage over us. I read 2 Corinthians 2 and 10 out of the message by Bible that said, if you forgive him, I forgive him. Then he said, don't think I'm carrying around a list of personal grudges. The fact is that I'm joining in with your forgiveness as Christ is with us, guiding us. After all, we don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for yet more mischief. We're not oblivious to his sly ways. We don't want to unwittingly give Satan an opening for more mischief. We don't want to give him more room. The advantage of unforgiveness, or the advantage of unforgiveness gives our enemies, is that it renders us helpless to defend ourselves against him. All because we're unwilling and refuse to forgive. What unforgiveness does, and I mentioned this morning, is that it warps our perception and feeling about myself. It warps my perception and feeling about others. It warps my perception and my assumption about how others perceive and feel about me. It affects me in many ways. As I said, it's like putting sunglasses on. You see things different. You perceive things different through the lens of unforgiveness. It renders all the facts, all the things that are actually true, it, it renders those my, per, my perception or my conclusions, it renders them unreliable because it's coming through a different perspective. I'm talking about the deception of perception. perception. Brother Ryan addresses the deception of shame. We've been talking about that a little bit. He said, some wonder if God, if God forgives so readily, then why do I feel the need to constantly repent over and over again for the things in my past that God's Word said He's already forgiven? Have you ever feel that way before? Like you got to keep repenting and repenting and repenting over something that God's Word said He's already forgiven? Well, he says that the answer is because you're dealing with shame caused by the devil and not guilt caused by God. The devil is, is giving shame. He's condemning guilt is conviction leading us to God. The other is driving us away. The Bible said that Satan is the accuser of the brethren. I'm a brother. And as a brother, he accuses me to me. He accuses me to me. His goal is to get me to accuse myself. He tries to undermine my faith in God by telling me I am how unworthy I am. First John says, if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. In the Amplified it says, whenever our hearts in tormenting self, self-accusation make us feel guilty and condemn us, for we are in God's hands. He, for He is above and greater than our conscience, our heart. He knows perceives and understands everything. Nothing is hidden from him. My point is that the deception of perception is that the father of lies is lying to us and making false accusations. Then we believe, and because we believe his false accusations, we begin to accuse ourselves. We begin to convince 
ourselves that we are unlovable, even though the Word says we are lovable. But we begin to convince ourselves that we are in a hopeless situation, even though the Word says that there is hope in Jesus. Those words is for much more. We begin to question, even though God has forgiven me, why don't I feel forgiven? And the answer is because you have not forgiven and released yourself of that shame. It is shame that undermines my faith and prevents God from being able to answer my prayers. The scripture said, My heart condemns me. Shame also gives Satan access to my thoughts. Timothy 3 and 7. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. Lest the reason God have a good report, report is he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Reproach means humiliating treatment or language. Scornful insult. In the Living Bible, he said he must be well spoken of by the people outside of the church, those who are not Christians, so that Satan can't trap him with many accusations and leave him without the freedom to flee to lead the flock. See, the lies he tells me, the lies the devil tells you about myself, about yourself, they overwhelm us and they allow him to capture us in his snare. The devil's goal is to sow seeds of lies to me about myself. His goal is to lie to me, to put lies in my heart that I will accept. And then step back and allow me to finish his work for him. Because if I take the seed of his lies and I begin to believe it, then it will affect me. His ultimate triumph is for me to stand in opposition to myself. And when you and I begin to believe the lies of the enemy, when we begin to perceive that he says that we know our lies but we perceive them as truth then that's the deception because all of a sudden things get turned around and we're believing things we know are not true and it gets in our heart and it affects our actions we begin to repeat all the accusations he has implanted into our mind Israel believing the lie they believed the lie that they were bugs. All of Israel wandered for 40 years, and all of them died in the wilderness except for Joshua and Caleb. But all of them got the report from the, from the spies. They all believed the word of the spies. They didn't have to. They heard two voices that day. All of those people heard two voices. One, we're not able. One, let's go, we are able. They chose to listen to the lies. They perceived that what the great majority was saying was true, even though it wasn't. And because they bought into the lie, it sent them on a journey where they would die in the wilderness. Think about it. They all heard the report. They responded to it negatively. They, they took the lie, and then they started going with it. They believed they were bugs. Some today believe the devil's lies and accusation. And so they keep repeating it. They keep dwelling on them, and it keeps them bound. Timothy said that in, uh, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. Oppose themselves. That means to place oneself in opposition. When I place myself in opposition with myself, I take Satan's side in the argument against my soul's will. That's what he said. Uh, 2 Timothy 2.25 In meekness instructing those that oppose themselves. <coughs> when I do that, I'm, I'm, doing, I'm beginning to dispute or question those things. That means I'm arguing or debating. I'm, I'm discussing the pros and cons. I'm questioning the truth of it. I'm giving it to doubt. I'm opposing in any way. I'm resisting the things. This, and all of that results in a clash of opposing opinions inside that often comes out in anger and heated manner. I'm getting somewhere. When I allow Satan to coerce me into opposing myself, when I allow him to feed me lies and then I perceive what he's telling me is true, all of a sudden those things begin to oppose myself. And when they come through a verbal assault conducted upon me by myself, when I start repeating the devil's lies, he tells you you're worthless. No, I'm not. He tells you you're worthless. No, I'm not. He tells you you're worthless. Well, maybe I am. He tells you you're worthless. Yes, I am. He tells me you're worthless. I'm worthless. I'm worthless. I'm worthless. Now I'm telling me I'm worthless. He tells you you're a failure. No, I'm not. He tells you you're a failure. No, I'm not. He tells you you're a failure. Maybe I failed some. He tells you you're a failure. 
captive by him. 2 Timothy 2.25, the Amplified. Let's see it again. He must correct his opponents with courtesy and gentleness in the hope that God may grant that they will repent and come to know the truth. Why? <laughs> that they will perceive and recognize and become accurately acquainted with and acknowledge. They want them to repent and come to the truth. Why? Because we need to perceive and recognize and become accurately acquainted and acknowledge truth. Truth. It is the truth of God's word that sets us free. Right. And he said, in acknowledging the truth, for the next verse said, they may come to their senses and escape out of the snare of the devil, having been held captive by him, henceforth to do his God's will. He said, the reason they want to repent and come to truth is that they will perceive, recognize, accurately be acquainted to, acknowledge the truth. So 
with that. We focus on the lies of the enemy. We focus on the other stuff, the opposition, all that, instead of focusing on God. And because they focus on the wrong thing, they begin to perceive the wrong thing. Because we focus on the wrong stuff, we perceive or begin to think the wrong thing. And what they began to perceive or believe or think was they were not able. That they weren't able. They thought there's no way we can do it. There's no way we're getting through those walls. There's no way we're getting through those big eyes. There's no way we can do it. See, some see those giants, maybe not the beady eyes or the big walls, but the giants you fight in your life, they see those giants and they think we can't do it. It's too big. It's too hard for God. That's the deception of perception. Because you're not looking through God's Word. You're not focused on His Word. You're not focused on Him. You're not looking at the things correctly. You're not looking at them with eyes of faith. You need to recover. You need to recover the way you recover, one of the ways is through a sound mind. Peter said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion, walking about, seeking whom he may devour. The Amplified said, be well balanced, temperate, sober mind. Sober mind, it means to be free from the influence of intoxicants. Soberness is a product of right thinking. Right thinking, or correct, or factual, or true, or pure thinking. Thinking that's done with a sober mind. That's why we meditate on the word day and night. That's why Philippians 4 and 8, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure or lovely or of a good report, that there be any virtue, there be any praise, think on these things. Think about those things. Everybody <coughs> says, think on, weigh, and take into account these things. Fix your mind on these things. Intoxication means to be under the influence of spirits. And if we're to be free of the devil's influence, we've got to be free of the intoxicating delusion of his lies that we've come under the influence of. Some have come under the influence of his lies, his perception. You don't believe you can because he keeps telling you you can't and you bought into it. But you can. You can do all which gives you strength. Amen. That one to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask for living according to the power that works in us. Amen. We need to think on, weigh, take into account, fix our minds on the truths of God's word in order to change the perception of the devil's lies that produce in our life. Focus on his word. Focus on what his word change the perception of the lies of the enemy. I mentioned some truths in the last couple of messages. Truths. God is love. That's a truth. He is love. He loves you unconditionally. That's a truth. God is for us. That's a truth. Some perceive the devil's lies and they begin to think themselves God's not for me. God doesn't care about Of his word. It tells me that God 
against you. He said that they you are born again of water and spirit. He said old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. It's a new day. We're new creatures. All things pass away. It doesn't matter what the enemy says. It doesn't matter what it perceives going on. not see us as bugs. He does not see us as insignificant. God did not die for insignificant. He did not shed his blood and allow his body to be broken for insignificant. He died to set us free. He died because we are a chosen generation, a royal a peculiar or special people. You're not insignificant. You're significant. God loves you. God cares about you. You need to get rid of the deception of perception. You need to get your eyes into the book. You need to put your faith in what says the word of God. God does not see you as a little toy. God sees you as a child. see things through the lens of the Word of God instead of allowing the devil to deceive us and cause us to perceive things or see things that are not true. He's a liar. He is a liar. That's what he does. That's what he is. And just as God is love, the devil is a liar. He is the father of liars. He won't say anything that is not a lie. Israel wanted 40 years outside of God's will because they believed a lie. They wandered 40 years outside of God because they believed a lie. The lie was that they were not able. It was based on what they perceived or saw with their carnal eyes. They looked at the child and they perceived that they were not able. They perceived that the giant, the opposition, the enemy was bigger than them and their God. And they were wrong. But their perception became their reality. Right. That's why I'm not just trying to focus and get us to think today. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy. Look at the reality of God's word. God is able. It was their perception of deception that cost them their lives. Only Joshua and Caleb had the right perception. They were not deceived by what they saw because they had faith in who they were. <coughs> Job. There was another time that Israel cowered. They lived in fear of a giant named Goliath. I forgot you remember. They perceived that Goliath was stronger. But David had faith in God. David was little. David was small. David was smaller than many, but David had faith in God. David believed that God had delivered the lion and the bear into his hands, and that he would also deliver God Goliath into his hands. David perceived or believed that he was in fact the giant, and Goliath was the toy. Goliath was the bug. Goliath was the little person. Because of his perception, his belief, his faith, Goliath fell by David's hands. God sees us as giants. God sees us as giants. God plus us is everything. Us minus God is nothing. But God sees us. God's work with us. God's for us. God loves us. God sees us as giants. The problem is perception. Because even as we say that, we tend to think we're the toy to be stepped on. We tend 
tend to think that we are really small and insignificant compared to all of our giant problems and all of our giant issues and all of our giant stuff. But that's because we've been given the perception of deception. You and I are not little insignificant toys. This is the, really the enemy, and this is us with God. This Good. is who we are. This is who we're meant to be. Right. The problem is perception. God sees us as giants, strong men and women for Him. The reason I've been preaching about shame and forgiveness and some of these things is those things affect our perception, what we believe about ourselves. There needs to be a healing of that perception in order for you to soar to where you believe what God believes, and that's you are giants. Have to allow God to heal and deliver you from the things that keep you back. Unmask the lies of the enemy, those false perceptions. You and I are Holy Ghost filled children.
you know that while we can, sometimes we give permission to the enemy and not God. We give the devil the permission to enter our lives, our house, our family. The devil's playing games with something they don't even know. He's acting like the big giant and treating us like the toy, telling us what we may and may not do. He's giving us permission. No, you may go to church, but you may not go to the altar. You may go to work, but you may not witness. You may go to school, but you may not let your light shine. And because we bought into perception and deception, we listen to the devil and we do what he says. And when he doesn't give us permission, we don't have to. We ain't supposed to listen to the devil. The devil's defeated. We don't need permission from him. We've already been given permission by God. He's already said, go be a light of the world. He's already said, let your light so shine. He's already given us the ability to be light. He's given us the ability to be witnesses because that's what gave us the Holy Ghost. See, we need to clean our spiritual glasses. If we're submitted to God, if we're living right, if we're doing right, the devil can't do nothing to us without God's permission. Job needed God's permission, or, or the devil needed Job's permission to attack Job. We've been given authority and power over all the works of the enemy. Strong men and women realize this. They take authority in their life and in their homes. Here's my main point tonight. Stop listening to the lies of the enemy. Stop waiting for the enemy to give you permission to do a work for God. You don't need his permission. You don't need his uh, uh, permission. You don't need him to say anything. You already have been given permission. You've already been empowered. See, he's trying to keep us focused on ourselves. He's trying to get us, the, the, the deception of perception is he's trying to get us to look at us, our flaws, our issues, our problems, our shame, all that stuff, instead of looking at Jesus, the author of the So let's end tonight by looking at what the Bible says about him. Isaiah 14 and 12, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nation? Okay? Lucifer, son of the morning. How did it all end for you? You that weakened the nations, now you're cut down to the ground. For you said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars. I will sit also upon the mountain of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high God. Six times in two verses, he says, I. It was all about focus on him. And that's the deception of perception. The enemy's still trying to get us to focus on us instead of on God. But then God tells him the truth. He said, okay, that's all the stuff you're saying you're going to do. Here's the truth of what's really going to happen. Verse number 15, yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. He has been brought down. He has been defeated. I've read the back of the book.
on you with care, they will be in deep thought scratching their heads. This is the troubler of the earth, the shaker. This, the shaker. This. The amplify. Those who see you will gaze at you. They will consider. This is the man who made the earth to shake. just a toy. He's just a defeated toy. He deceives so many because so many perceive him to be so tall, so big, so bad. See, we blame too much on the devil and we fear the devil too much. We perceive too much about him. But in glory, in glory, God's going to reveal the truth. God's going to reveal the truth that we were the giants. We, huh, the Hebrews 11, roll call of faith, giants. We were the giants who by faith, who by faith, who by faith, they didn't tremble, they didn't back up. Let's just come to the altar. Let's pray. Let's sing. Let's lift him up. 